What's up guys, today I'm going to talk about how the Philadelphia Phillies failed their rebuild. And as always, please like and subscribe and tell me your thoughts on the team in the comments section below. When the Phillies began their rebuild, they had a bleak team and a weak farm system. One of their first moves was hiring Matt Klintak, who worked with the Angels at the time. While most teams going into a rebuild have a weak farm system, the Phillies farm system was especially weak. If you don't believe me, here are their top prospects in 2013. This list is composed of players like Jesse Biddle, Ethan Martin, Tommy Joseph, Michael Franco, and others. The prospects in their farm system that year have combined for an astounding 0.2 wins above replacement. Overall, with multiple guys in their farm system, most barely made it to the majors, and the ones that did were almost worse than replacement level players in the big leagues. To make it even worse, most of these players never contributed to the Phillies, but they played for other teams. If you fast forward three years, their farm system does not look much better. While at the time their 2016 farm system was one of the best in baseball, the prospects have not developed. In 2016, their premier prospects were J.P. Crawford, Nick Williams, Mark Appel, Cornelius Randolph, and Jake Thompson. Almost all of their best prospects did not make it to the big leagues, and the ones that did struggled mightily. The best of the bunch, J.P. Crawford, was a consensus top five prospect in baseball, and while he has been solid, he has also been greatly disappointed. Since making his debut in 2017, he has 3.8 wins above replacement with a 231 batting average and an 87 OPS+. However, he did win a gold glove this past season. To make it worse for the Phillies is that he only had 225 plate appearances for them before he was traded to the Mariners. The biggest issue in failing for the Phillies was that they struggled in developing prospects. Not a lot of their issues can be contributed to this. They struggled in drafting, especially in the 2016 draft where they had the number one pick. While they opted to pick Mickey Moniak, who is their number 12 prospect according to MLB.com, there were a number of issues with their draft. While a lot of blame can be placed on Moniak, who was a 18-year-old when he was drafted, and he made the, his debut last season putting up solid numbers. He was able to make his debut as a 22-year-old, which is more than most baseball players his age can say. Moniak could be a solemn player if he is given many at-bats. However, their number one reason for selecting him at first overall was because they wanted to save money and select more expensive picks later in the draft. While this is a sound strategy and teams do this every year, the Phillies failed at it. The picks that the Phillies selected have not been better than Moniak or anyone of note. Had they decided to not select Moniak, they could have gotten 2020 American League Rookie of the Year Kyle Lewis or St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Dakota Johnson. However, Moniak could have a better career than these two. In the 2018-2019 offseason, the Phillies decided to pivot from rebuilding and to try to start contending. This offseason is most famous for owner John Middleton saying the phrase, stupid money. The Phillies decided to spend a lot of stupid money that offseason. During the offseason, the Phillies acquired many premier players, including David Robertson, Andrew McCutcheon, Gene Segura, and Bryce Harper. However, spending all of that stupid money would end up being a major problem for them. Segura and McCutcheon have struggled and have been below average while being paid a lot of money. In 2020, Segura and McCutcheon combined made over $31 million. Spending money on Robertson has backfired as well. Over the past two years, Robertson has made $23 million while pitching six innings. However, the contracts that have taken up the most money have been signing Bryce Harper and Zach Wheeler. While both are no doubt quality players, they've taken up a lot of cap space. While Harper is no doubt a good player, the contract makes him overhyped. In that offseason, the Phillies signed him to a 13-year, $330 million contract. So for the past year, Harper made $27 million. Last year, he made $27 million and had 1.9 wins above replacement. While this is undoubtedly solid and Harper was one of the best players on the Phillies last season, he takes up too much money when they could get multiple players that produce around the same wins above replacement for way less of a price. The Harper contract will undoubtedly look worse in the couple of years when Harper is out of his prime. And the players making all that money, the Phillies ran out of stupid money to spend. Their bullpen in 2020 was baseball's worst because they couldn't afford quality bullpen pieces. 
To make matters even worse, it was rumored that the Phillies were shopping Zach Wheeler because they could not afford him. While most rebuilding teams have found the balance of having solid veterans and good prospects, the Phillies were not able to get either. The Astros and Cubs each had a very long and trying rebuild with their respective mistakes in the draft. One of the most notable mistakes was the Astros drafting Mark Appel at number one overall, who did not make it to the big leagues. While both teams have had numerous misses in the draft, they produced their respective stars like Alex Bregman, Carlos Correa, Chris Bryant, and Kyle Schorber. Both teams were able to match those young stars with proven veterans like John Lester, Josh Reddick, and Anthony Rizzo, among other solid contributors to their World Series teams. The issue for the Phillies is that they produced neither young stars or got good veterans besides Zach Wheeler and Bryce Harper. The only quality young stars that the Phillies produced were Alec Baum, Reese Hoskins, and Aaron Nola. While there were many factors in not becoming a good team, their farm system was the main key to all of this. Teams like the Dodgers have been able to contend for so long because of their farm system. Now that Dave Dombrowski is their general manager, he will try to get them back to the playoffs since 2011. I would expect that Dombrowski would try the same method that he has done with prior teams before by trading his prospects for big leaguers. If they succeed, they will try to contend in arguably baseball's best division with the Mets, Marlins, Nationals, and the Braves. Only time will tell to see if Dombrowski succeeds with his plan. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and tell me your thoughts in the comment section below.